War is a time of tragedy and suffering, a time when the toughest characters are put to the test and will often be unable to cope with the situation they're facing. However, after all, this is also the time when real heroes appear in the world. Those who will be talked about for dozens and maybe hundreds of years after the conflict ends. Such heroes, especially for Polish citizens, were the silent unseen, who risked their lives and carried out almost impossible missions, which could determine the outcome of the conflict. The official name of the silent unseen, Chico Chiemini, was Chico Chiemini Paratroopers of the Home Army, and during the war they were nicknamed Birdmen or Throwers in Polish. At the beginning, it is worth considering who they were exactly, and under which flag, at least formally, they fought. They belonged to the Polish Armed Forces, but their training took place in Great Britain and Italy. It was comprehensive training, giving them knowledge and skills in many fields, far beyond traditional military training. The Silent Unseen were therefore fluent in melee combat, sabotage and tactics, and prepared to perform command functions. The Silent Unseen were not a standard military formation. They did not belong to a specific unit or battalion. They had no formal structures, colors, or traditions. And although they were established by the official order of the Commander-in-Chief of the Home Army, it can be said that they did not officially exist. At least, because of the particularly dangerous and complex nature of their actions, no one was supposed to know about their existence. The name under which they are known today initially referred to the fact that after reporting to the special unit, volunteers imperceptibly disappeared from their respective departments. The future Silent Unseen were trained from 1940. It is noteworthy that although, as the official name indicated, they were primarily a parachuting group, it was difficult to find experienced paratroopers among Polish soldiers. In the end, almost 600 people were selected from several thousand volunteers, who, after intensive training, took the oath of the Silent Unseen. 316 soldiers were dropped to Poland, and about a dozen were sent to other occupied European countries. The most famous Silent Unseen operations include three actions codenamed Wildhorn, carried out in 1944. They were unusual actions, which only a comprehensive and perfectly trained unit could handle. The gist of the actions was not actually a drop of soldiers, but landing on the area of the enemy using a makeshift airport and taking important people and documents from the country. The plan had a lot of aspects which could have led to absolute failure of the mission, which was so dangerous that the English did not want to agree to carry it out and to make the plane available for a long time. The first landing, Wildhorn 1, showed the scale of the threat resulting from undertaking actions which were so reckless and difficult to plan. The Polish underground army managed to secure the makeshift landing pad, but caught the attention of the Germans, which resulted in the death of 40 people. Ultimately, however, the action was successful. The silent unseen were delivered to Poland and important people, documents, and microfilms with materials which were extremely important for the Allies were taken from the country. The next action went much more efficiently and without direct casualties. The plane only spent a few minutes on the ground and remained undetected, although two people who were to leave the country did not reach the landing site. The Wildhorn 3 action was the most important of all. Poles came into direct possession of the V-2 missile, it was the first structurally successful ballistic missile created by the Germans. Transporting its fragments and plans developed by Polish technicians became the priority of the Silent Unseen. The action was constantly threatened. First, the buried wheels of the aircraft prevented the machine from taking off from the airport in Poland. And then it turned out that the wheels could not be hidden due to the leakage of hydraulic fluid. Multiple threats arose. The destination could not be reached. The aircraft passengers could die, and materials which could affect the fate of the war could be lost. Ultimately, the liquid was replenished with water and tea. The soldiers remained calm, and despite the threat, they were able to seek creative solutions. Of course, the Wildhorn actions are not the only activities carried out by the Silent Unseen. They often carried out direct operations, such as sending a small squad to rescue valuable people from the enemy's hands, causing a diversion or simply carrying out missions that no one else would undertake. They required above average cunning, attention and physical effort. Lack of attention could lead not only to death, 
but also to diplomatic scandals. The Silent Unseen dealt with the elimination of particularly dangerous enemies, obtaining the most important data, and all special missions that required appropriate training. The way the Home Army found out about planned drops was extremely interesting. Radio broadcasts from London were listened to from dawn to dusk. If an agreed Polish song appeared during the broadcast, it meant that a drop would be made the following night. The place depended on the song which was broadcast. The Silent Unseen could change the fate of the people they met during the war. They carried hope, improved morale, and above all, they did not shy away from deadly tasks. There is a reason why their legend continues to this day, and Poles see themselves as an example of courage and exemplary military attitude. The Silent Unseen are considered the prototype of contemporary Polish special forces. <laughs>